I do think that I probably have some kind of genetic disorder in the synthesis <laughs> of... Yes, the genetic disorder of being human. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today is a slightly different video. We're gonna react to Mark Bell's power project and his recent upload, Why Most Vegans Fail. Let's have a look. You know, you mentioned your vegan diet when you were in college and if there are any vegans that are listening, um, I'm, I'm, I wanna know your um, your take on veganism as a healthy diet because there are, there are a lot of people that are vegan. It's not a lot of people. Get my micronutrients in. Um, it's a healthy diet for me, etc. So it's impossible to get all your micronutrients on a vegan diet. For example, vitamin A, vitamin D3, creatine, carnosine, cholesterol, all of those vitamins, nutrients, hormones are not found in a plant-based diet. All your micronutrients in, do you think that if you did a vegan diet today, would it be as ineffective as it was when you were in college or with the knowledge you have now, could you do that and live a robust? It would always be ineffective because it is impossible for a human to thrive on plants. Humans are not herbivores. Healthy lifestyle, or would there still be things missing that you you just would stay away from that for yourself? There's a couple, I'll give you a couple answers to that. So okay. first of all, there are a lot of healthy vegans. Oh, yeah. There are also way more for ex-vegans than there are healthy vegans. So if you look, there's not a lot of data on it, but if you look at survey data, the, the over two thirds of people who become vegan stop doing veganism. Right on. Um, and then there's- a, And how many people stop eating meat for the rest of their lives? Even stronger data that the vast majority of people who call themselves, I don't know about vegan, but the vast majority of people who call themselves vegetarian eat some fish or even some chicken some of the time. If you watch this video for the very first time, I was a vegan for four years straight. During that time, I met many people within the vegan community and let me tell you, yes, they cheat. There's also a lot of loose definition, uh, but you know, there are, I'm, I have no doubt that there are also people who are straight up full vegan and do perfectly well on it. I, no. I don't disbelieve that. I just think that it's probably a pretty small number. But why don't you disbelieve that? If you look into the mainstream narrative, they will tell you that only B12 is missing from a vegan diet. But that is not true. As I said, vitamin D3, vitamin K2, vitamin A, creatine, cholesterol, carnitine, carnosine, etc, etc, etc. There's so many things missing from a vegan diet that vegans have to excessively supplement in order to cope with that malnourishment for a while. But as you mentioned already, most vegans become ex-vegans again. Why is that so? If you look into it, especially nowadays, you will see that so many vegans are vegan for ethical reasons. If they are so convinced that eating animals is wrong, why would they drop out? In the end, even in those ethical vegans, you see that their health deteriorates and they have to quit. So no, there is no body that can do it successfully long term we are not herbivores but on the other hand i i was definitely doing the best that i could at that time yeah, man. i happen to know you know orders of magnitude more about nutrition than i did at that time and so i would do it differently and How? i think by adding meat that i would do better on it but it's tough to say because i, I don't really believe that i i think it's obvious that most people who go vegan don't wind up as you know they don't wind up as bad as i did right mm -hmm. like the average experience of someone who becomes vegan even who quits a year later is not i beg to differ if you quit after one year okay granted maybe you can still save your health but most vegans that dropped out after three years four years like myself five years six years man they have irreparable damage again but That's every true. single tooth i had got a cavity and yep. you know i went psychotic mm. and so yep. i stopped that's not the typical reason someone quits no it's pretty typical this is what i hear every single day ex-vegans constantly report on going psychotic having huge mental problems cavities i myself i was running to the dentist every single day i had to get my teeth pulled it was absolutely terrible digestive upset depression you name it it is a very very common experience with veganism ever heard from such an experience by eating steak veganism me neither um you know it was too hard or they were tired all the time or something is way more common um and so 
I do think that I probably have some kind of genetic disorder in the synthesis <laughs> of yes, the genetic disorder of being human. Some compound that is essential to bodily function that is not found in any of the supplements that I was taking at that time. And is Man, listen, most people cannot sufficiently convert beta carotene into vitamin A. Most people cannot sufficiently convert ALA into DHA and EPA. The list goes on. You're not the only one that supplemented with everything. Your experience is the common vegan experience. Not Again. found in a vegan diet and is very high in organ meats. Because yeah. that would perfectly explain why I was trying to do veganism the best I could. I was also taking all the supplements that people said that if you're a vegan, you should take. And then I just, you know, between that and instituting a high organ meat, high nutrient dense animal food diet from Weston Price style was just yep. complete night and day for my functioning. Like, I don't think the average person. Man, so you already experienced that. How can you now sit there and tell the people that? Yeah, possibly you can do a vegan diet right. How? Organs are the most nutritionally dense foods on the planet. With what will you replace it? With a carrot? And would go through a journey like I did unless they, unless Damn. they had something idiosyncratic about their biochemistry and so i assume that i have that i just haven't found it yet mm. i've thought of some candidates but i don't i haven't confirmed anything mm. that would explain that so it's still a mystery to me dude plants come with a bunch of anti-nutrients animals don't want to be eaten that is true this is why they have defense mechanisms like claws teeth etc Plants don't want to be eaten either in nature everything tries to defend itself this is why plants have anti-nutrients. Anti-nutrients will poison bugs. We are smarter than bugs, so we take those plants, we cook them up, we grind them up, we process them. But the point is that there are still anti-nutrients within those plants. Add to that a really, really low nutritional value and add to that a bunch of fiber. This is not human food. I guess I'm a little bit of a canary in the coal mine in the sense that <laughs> no, <laughs> my experience underscores that there are certain types of nutrients that are much easier to get from animal foods. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> other people might not have some whatever genetic defect I probably have, but that's not to say that their bodies... Oh, why do you hate yourself so much? Not going to have an easier time get if they just get those things in. And so from a nutritional perspective, I would never advise anyone to go vegan of because course there are Thank just you. more robust ways to go about almost any goal you could have for veganism. So for example, yep. you know, what are the, what are the values that people who are vegan generally have? Um, maybe they don't want to kill anything that's conscious. Mm. Like you could make a very strong case that an oyster is not more or less conscious than a plant. On top of that, vegans don't realize that their diet deforests habitats of small animals, grounds up animals such as rodents, and with that essentially destroys the planet. Industrial agriculture kills more animals for a loaf of bread than you could ever kill by eating a carnivorous diet. Like the China study, if you follow T. Colin Campbell, it's BS. you could believe that you want to, animal foods to be as close to 2% of your diet as you can get. Or you could believe right. like Joel Furman, who's another uh, popular... Yeah, all of those are vegan doctors. We know them here on the channel. But why would I believe those people? You already said that organs are the most nutritionally dense foods. So why would I not eat them? Another vegan doctor that... Wow. You want to eat at least 90% of your diet as plant foods, but you can allow 10% as junk food, and that can include animal foods. <laughs> if you believe either of... Animal foods are junk food now. The most nutritionally dense foods on the planet are junk foods. Those Makes things, sense. If you just included, you know, two ounces of... Like an ounce or two of liver a day and one or two clams and one or two oysters, you could meet, you could meet the... Um, well, liver wouldn't liver wouldn't fit into the consciousness thing, but in the 2% or 10%, right, from Campbell or Furman, you could meet the 2 or 10% easily and be... This essentially explains why veganism is a mental illness. Look at those mental gymnastics. In order or two Thought. of magnitude more protected from zinc deficiency, B12 deficiency, and a you know, bunch of other deficiencies just by including a handful of those 
extremely nutrient-dense animal foods. And with that, you debunked yourself yet again. You call them yourself nutritionally dense animal foods. So they're not junk foods after all. On top of that, you have to realize that those oysters and whatnot are the only real nutrition source within a vegan diet. Why would vegans need animal foods supplemental to their diet to be healthier? Don't you get it? Plants are not human food. Just this thing, I could just think the same thing is true of including some bivalves. I'm not, I wouldn't force anybody to abandon their ethics, but I would encourage them to think through their ethics and to see if those ethics are reconcilable to including a small or moderate amount. Those ethics are pure delusion. As I already said, vegans kill more animals. If they really would be ethical, they would go carnivore. Highly nutrient dense That's animal it. foods that best. One cow can feed a whole family for a year. You cannot beat that. It's impossible. Millions of mice, millions of insects are being killed for plants. Comport with those ethics because I think that it's not that no one can be vegan and, and thrive. <laughs> but you're just way more likely to thrive if you've covered those bases. And when it comes to like a meat-based diet, would you conjecture kind of the same thing? Like uh, could somebody that's on a meat-based diet just maybe have small amount of fruit and vegetables and get some of the nutrients that they need from that? Or is there not even a reason to? What are your thoughts on that? What nutrients? I think that's actually like a radically different thing because I, as far as I can tell, no one goes on a carnivore diet for ethical concerns. But you could. Thinks it's ethical to kill a I'm cow, just, but unethical yeah. to kill I'm just like talking about uh, just optimal, I guess. And just like, like, I don't particularly like love vegetables, but I do eat them here and there. And there's a lot of concern over like, cholesterol and i know that it's like a loaded thing with cholesterol uh, heart disease uh, just just over consuming of fat and it's my understanding some people have genetic predisposition to uh, you know some higher dietary cholesterol uh, you know issues because of uh, heritage and things of that nature so what you described there is genetically higher cholesterol but who tells us that that is bad if you look into the cholesterol studies you will see that there's always an interest behind it most of the time it is statin companies would it make some sense for somebody that's mainly meat based to just at least implement some vegetables do you think that's wise or do you think it's like maybe not even necess necessary i know you didn't ask me but it is not necessary because those vegetables are not found in our natural habitat and that's all you need to know for how many years have humans been eating green beans broccoli and all of that stuff it is cultivated on a huge agricultural scale we never ate it and those plants are manufactured after all go into a forest and see what kind of vegetables you will find the answer spoiler alert is of course zero there are no vegetables in your natural habitat the only thing you can find is meat meat and organs comes with all the nutrition that a human needs i think that Fact. Well, I think the same principle is is true that your diet will be more robust to deficiencies if you include plant foods. I think I, I would encourage people to... But how, man? You mentioned liver yourself. If you eat enough liver, how will you get deficient? In what? View it kind of like an economic really? portfolio. Tell me. Where, you know, if, and so a lot of people go carnivore because there's more of those potentially toxic things that you need to clear in plant foods than there is in animal foods. Yeah. Um, but I think it, when you diversify across the spectrum, you are protecting yourself against the downside risk of not getting enough of an essential nutrient. And you're also protecting yourself against the downside risk of accumulating too much of any one given toxin that exceeds your ability to- What toxin is in red meat? What toxin is in eggs? What toxin is in salmon roe? Tell me. All right, guys, and the video is long enough as it is. I'm going to cut it off here. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support the channel, all the links are in the description box below. Check them out. Thank you very much. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.